How's it going, everybody? My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I am your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers. And we are coming back to you with a playoff matchup for the Uva Naranja Premier League, also known as the UNPL. And we are taking on none other than the number one seed and Hopeless in his illustrious Aurorus. If you remember watching back previously at our BBR Summer Scramble run, you will know that it was ended by Hopeless. And we felt absolutely hopeless at the end of that match. He just seemed to be in my head and nothing I could do about it. Hopefully, we can right the shit this time and pick up a dub and move on to the quarterfinals of the playoffs. But you know, I think the season it hasn't been great. It's been good, but it hasn't been great. And I take a large, large uh, responsibility for that. Just being in two upload leagues has really been rough. But hopefully we've got the team here. I want to throw, uh, give a big shout out to my buddy Jeremy, coach of the Springfield Starmies, for putting in the work with me this week on this team, going over the sets, giving me a mock. Yeah, it was nice. And it made me feel a little bit more comfortable about this matchup. I do think this is going to be, say, somewhat of a hyper offensive matchup where we're, con where we're sacking things left and right. Or at least that's the way that I see myself winning this match. As you can see, my opponent has a literally stacked team. I don't know how he was able to draft this team and go completely unnoticed. We were in the same drafting pool and I just, I honestly don't know what happened. <laughs> um, he's got access to Chien Bell, hits super hard on the physical side. Spectrier, Spectrier, whatever you want to call it, hits super hard on the specially special offensive side. Then he's got Necrozma, which is a great utility mon or setup sweeper. Lando T there being the Intimidator, um, great defensive check to most of my team, could be Choice Scarf and just throw off some Earthquakes here and there, you turn around, just chip away things for the Spectre A and the Chien Pal, but then he also has access to Quackle Ball, which is a dangerous Snowball Sweeper there at the end with access to things like Aqua Step and the Moxie Boost uh, ability. His first Terra Captain is Shaman, Landform of course, rocking the Grass Fairy and Electric. Pretty bulky, 100 across the board like any uh, normal mythical is. Uh, I do expect it to be the Terra Captain that does come to this match. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean there's not much else to it. Seed Flare hits pretty hard, can raise his defenses which would be pretty good for him. Um, then he's got Tinkaton, great utility user, especially for this match. I think Thunder Wave, Stealth Rock, Gigaton Hammer, Knockoff are, poten are the, is like the potential set for this. Maybe Air Balloon Pickpocket or something like that. Um, then he's got Quillfish, another Intimidator, and Toxic Spike Setter. Mischievous is his second Terror Captain with Ghost Fairy and Electric. And access to a Violite, which makes it pretty bulky. And then last but certainly not least is the Greenant, which is not a Terror Captain to be slept on but I really don't expect it to come to this match. It has access to normal ground and steel. The six that you that I anticipate my opponent to bring are going to be his top six. It's a very top heavy team with GM Pal, Spectre A, Lando T, uh, Quackaval, Shaman, and Necrozma. I could see Tinkaton coming in over Necrozma, um, and then maybe, maybe Mischievous over Shaman if he wants to bring more than one Terra Captain. Uh, it's really difficult. I do think that the top six or what he does bring to this match though and if that's not what comes then I think that makes it a little bit better but it's also pretty scary because I don't know what my opponent has planned if he doesn't bring those six. Um, you will notice that his only hazard removal is the Quaqua Val so we do have I guess some things to try and take advantage of that but at least we look prepared in the team preview it's just our team or building preview based on the team we can set up hazards and use that against our opponent. So let's look at the team that we're bringing and why we're bringing them. First up is Choice Specs Dragapult. In homage to Q the Costa Rican, Choice Specs Dragapult is the best Dragapult and we hope to just break through our opponent's team with this. It is very scary because he does have access to the Chien Pao which can deal a lot of damage between Sucker Punch and Ice Shard to this thing because it is the fastest Mon. You could just outright knock us out if he's Choice Scarf, but it's something to keep in mind. We have Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse, and U-Turn. Shadow Ball goes pretty well into my opponent's team outside of uh, Greedent and the Chien Pao. 
Flamethrower is there for the Tinkenton and the Chien Pao pretty much, and then Dragon Pulse is also pretty good into my opponent's team outside of his like Tinkenton and then the Fairy Terras. You turn for Pivoting. Then we've got oh sorry, we are speed creeping a timid Spectrier because Chien Pao just really wants to come in and hit a priority dark or ice move against us, so I'm not really gonna worry about the speed there. Then we've got Kilowattro rocking that competitive ability with Wise Glasses. My opponent has two Intimidators, and I do expect at least one of them to come, that being the Land OT. So competitive just made the most sense, and he doesn't really have an electric an electric Mon outside of Terra Electric Mistress, right? So we don't need Volt, Volt Absorb, and I don't think Wind Power does well here. Air Slash, Thunderbolt, Terra Blast for Terra Water, and U-Turn, U-Turn to pivot out on things, uh, if we can get to plus two with through the competitive boost, we're out speed or we're killing pretty much anything. We want to save our Terra really until the Chien Pao wants to come in and try to revenge us. And at that point, we can Terra Water, live the Icicle Crash or Ice Shard potentially, and kill it with an Air Slash or a Thunderbolt, potentially even a Terra Blast at that point. And then we've got our Spectre H Heck Komala baby. Leftovers, Max Fidef, uh, Rapid Spin, Knock Off, Wish, and U-Turn. Spectria can't touch this thing. Even if it wants to set up with uh, Nasty Plots into a to, into Draining Kiss, cannot really touch this, and we're just knocking things off, so get rid of its leftovers, baby. Wish for Longevity, Rapid Spin to keep Hazards off our side of the field, and then U-Turn to pivot in and out. And then we've got our Cleaner here at the end. If, once we get things chipped, get the Quaqua Valve potentially out of the way, we can just Bullet Punch to victory with a Choice Banded Metagross. Bullet Punch, Psychic Punch, Ice Punch, and Knock Off. Our opponent really doesn't want to switch into this. We were rocking Earthquake at first, but we decided it was only there for Tinkaton, and we have other things on the team that can deal with Tinkaton, so I just removed it all together. Then we've got a uh, Choppleberry, Samurai Hasui, Ceaseless Edge, Sacred Sword, Air Slash, and Flip Turn. The Choppleberry is there for Sacred Sword Chien Pao, and um, Close Combat or Low Kick Quaqua Val. Ceaseless Edge is to get up our spikes. Sacred Sword is to revenge the Chien Pao. Air Slash is there for the Quaqua Val, and then Flip Turn just to get up one out of there. You can see that getting up one out of there is a big part of this team because we have to predict our opponent and make those strong predictions. And then last but certainly not least is Sneasler. Rocking the Poison Touch Clear Amulet. This ensures that we cannot be, uh, we can't have our attack stat dropped through the means of like Intimidate Lando. Uh, Dire Claw is there to help spread status around just to, for chip damage, for paralysis, for sleep. Throat Chop is there for the horse. Trailblaze, once we get one up, we are outspeeding the entire team. And then Close Combat is there just for neutral damage on pretty much anything outside of the horse. That's the team that we're rocking with. Hopefully it's enough to get us a win. We're going to try to get connected here with Hopeless shortly and get this match on the way, guys. Alrighty, it looks like we have found our opponent. Let's see what they decided to bring to the matchup. Okay. No spec. I'm fine with that, actually. No spec. We see Tinkaton instead, right? So I had a feeling that Tinkaton could come to the matchup. I didn't think it made a lot of sense. So we do see Shaman, Chien. Maybe he. Maybe they thought that. Quack, Tink, Necro, Lando. Okay, so we got five out of six, right? Which is kind of good, I guess. Let's let's just straight up lead. Um, Dragapult in this. So, no spec is, like, it's worrisome, at the same time, I kind of like it. I 
Okay, my opponent decides to lead Tinkaton. Okay, Dragapult versus Tinkaton. Mold Breaker, we do see it. Tinkaton lead made a good amount of sense for my opponent. Um, I could see a Thunder Wave coming out here for sure. And then like, what is Playrough doing to us? Playrough's not doing enough to kill, so I think I'm just going to start breaking early and go for a Flamethrower. We do over 50%. Knockoff comes off. That's fine. And we see Leftovers. And that puts it just above the range, right? So he's probably like max spadef if I had a guess. So, knockoff isn't fantastic, but let's see. So we see, or we saw the knockoff, right? And that did more than that damage, I think. No, okay. Um, I think we did U turn out. And we can go into. Metagross is doing a decent amount of damage here. Koala's not here for much anymore. We do see a Thunder Wave come off, but we are comatose, which is great. And we're just going to knock this thing off because I'm tired of its leftovers already. And anything that wants to come in will lose its item as well. So we've seen stuff, so rocks, knock, T-Wave. Probably Gigaton as the last move. Let's just go for a rapid spin here. Rocks are up on our side of the build. Knockoff comes off. So it no longer has its item. Throw off a wish. Landorus comes out. Okay. I am going to U-turn out here. I can live anything that this wants to go for. He can go for a U-turn. That's fine. Let's see who he decides to go out to. If he goes out into anybody other than Chien Pal, then Dragapult looks good. Okay, yeah, take a ton. We can just go out into Dragapult. Rocks aren't up. Shadow Ball is free. Get Dragapult back up to full. And we do see a U-turn on the Lando. I don't think that told us much. Right, because I don't, even at plus one, I don't think Komala was out speeding. I mean, it tells us that he has some speed. It, it's a decent amount of speed investment, right? So he could just be a Scarf set. And nothing switches into Shadow Ball here, except for Chien Pao, so, but I don't think he wants to switch into the potential Flamethrower that could come off. 
So Shadow Ball is going to come in and it's going to pick up a kill on the Tankaton. Rocks are not... they still could be here, right? Because of the Lando, but I do, the way that the Lando came in and just clicked a U-turn makes me think that it's Scarf. Uh, Tinkerton goes in. Okay. So, Dragapult in against Quack. We are not choice specs. We can... We can just go for a Shadow Ball and see what kind of damage we're doing to this thing. Oh, he's a self fest. Maybe Quack. You turn out. into Metagross. Triple Axle, that's not gonna do anything. I'm just going to knock off because I don't think he wants to stay in and take this light. Okay, so he just goes for close combat. That's bullet front range. Oh shoot, yeah, I'm locked in. Duh. Okay, um... Sack off the koala here. So he was AV that we've seen CC and Aquasta and Spinner, or uh, no, Triple Axel. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Quack kills Kamala. Plus one. Does Samurai live? They close combat now. So we just go out here into Jozu and click the bullet punch. Aqua Jet comes off, doesn't kill. Fantastic. Metagross is going to pick up a kill on Quack. And Quack goes down. Lando probably comes in here pretty easily. Yeah. So Lando is in, right? Bullet Punch is doing a decent amount. Do I need this? For, I'm just gonna go for a Bullet Punch. I mean, yeah, the Bullet Punch would be great against uh, Chien Pao. That's fine. Lando kills Metagross with U-Turn. So I do think that he is a Scarf Landorus. Metagross goes down. Shaman comes out, and Sh Shaman's terror types are Grass, Fairy, and Electric. So I think 
going out here into Raiju is the play. Because if he Terra Fairies, then... Um, he's still taking a lot of damage here. So I think that's what we're going to go for. We go for the Dire Claw. Can we get a Sleep? Yes, we pulled a Sleep. Finally, first time all season, baby. First time all season. And he's lefties. First time all season that we pull the sleep on the Dire Claw. And that's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to expect my opponent to go into Lando here. So I'm going to go out into uh, Kilowattril to anticipate that. Oh, and he stays in, okay. So, kill a watch roll into Shaman. If you Terra Fairy, uh, Air Slash should still be able to pick up the kill here. So, we're gonna launch off an Air Slash into this. Okay. He's going to Terra. Are you Terra Fairy? Is that you call it? Yes, you are. We should be able to pick up the kill based off of the damage that we did with Dire Claw, I think. We don't pick up the kill, so that's rather unfortunate. Shaman wakes up, goes for a Terra Blast. We should be fine. Okay. Um. Let's just air slash again as he goes out into the Lando. The curls and the end pal. Okay. Of damage, baby. Okay, so if we Terra here, I just accidentally double click and that was almost super dangerous. If we Terra here, then Terra Blast kills, Thunderbolt kills. goes for the Icicle Crush. I mean, Crunch kills from right there, so he could just, he could freely go for a Crunch. Ice Shard comes out, yes. Maybe he thinks for Scarf. Terra Blast comes off. Kill the Watchers picking up the kill on the Chien Pao. This is fantastic. Chien Pao goes down. Kilowattro picks up the kill. We saw Ice Shard. Landorus comes out. Competitive boost. We are sitting at... Okay, so U-turn should definitely kill here. So we're just going to go for the Terra Blast. Earthquake comes off, that's going to kill. Okay, that's fine. Um, Lando picks up a kill on Kilowattro with EQ. Is this Lando, we're gonna play it like it's locked into EQ. Dragapult, 252. Let's say Jolly. Dragapult comes in, no choice specs.
and he should. Okay, let me think. Shadow Ball comes off and it does a good bit. Dragon Pulse does more, but he could easily switch into the Shaman. But if he does that, then we just Shadow Ball on the following turn. Let's just do that. Earthquake comes off. We should live this. Yes, we do. Okay. We have this in range. And I think, honestly, I want to sack off Sneasler here. I want to sack off the Sneasler to get out into Samurai. Lando's going to pick up a third kill against Sneasler. I think that's the play. Because I think the speed and coverage on my Dragapult are needed. Can we hit a Cease Sledge? Ceaseless Edge. That's what it's going to come down to. We do hit the Ceaseless Edge. Cool. So we do get up a layer of spikes. Lando goes down. Dragapult's looking pretty for an endgame. Uh, most likely. Shaman comes out. He does live the spikes. Let's go for a flip turn. I think we're faster. Okay, yep. Samurott picks up another kill against Shaman. And it all comes down to whatever this Necrozma set is. I guess my opponent forfeited? What? Did I miss something? I guess we win? What happened? Okay, uh, I guess we win. Cool! We're moving on to the next round of playoffs. Awesome. Uh, I guess, okay. Uh, yeah. My name's Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I'm your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers, guys. We took down the number one seed. Peace.